Welcome again to the second part of these videos about the anatomy of the ear. And now in this video, we're going to talk about the middle ear and its structures. We will start with the tympanic membrane. The middle ear is located medially to the external auditory canal and the tympanic membrane. So this is the tympanic membrane. Now to see the tympanic membrane clearly, we have to pull the ear pinna. We have to do a traction for the ear pinna. In adults, we should do posterior lateral and upward traction of the ear pinna. And in pediatrics, posterior lateral and downward. In other tympanic membrane structures, there is anterior malleolar fold. The malleus is the bone from the ossicles which attach to the tympanic membrane. This is the posterior malleolar fold, and it has a fold in the, on the tympanic membrane. This part of the tympanic membrane called pars flaccida, which is the loose part of the tympanic membrane. And it's easily affected by benign diseases like otitis media. This is the handle of the malleus, and this is called the embo. This part is called the cone of light. And last but not least, pars tensor, which is the tense part of the tympanic membrane and it's affected by malignant diseases usually like carcinoma now with that being said the function of the tympanic membrane is for transmission of vibrations from the external auditory canal to the middle ear to the ossicles. Now, if, if there is any rupture, collapse, or retraction of the tympanic membrane, it will lead into something called conductive hearing loss or cholesteatoma. This is the other name for conductive hearing loss. Now let's see a lateral view for the tympanic membrane. This is the tympanic membrane and posteriorly attached on the posterior side of the tympanic membrane, the ossicles. <clears throat> and the first bone is the malleus. Here is the attachment with the tympanic membrane, leading into folds in the tympanic membrane from the anterior view. And this is the real tympanic membrane. This is posterior malleolar fold, anterior malleolar fold. This is cone of light, the ambo. This is pars flaccida, and this is pars tensor. So this is all about the tympanic membrane. Now we'll go to the ossicles. Now the word ossicle means tiny bone. The ossicles are the smallest bones in the body. There are three, malleus, incus, and stapes. And the stapes is attached to the oval window. Now the function of the ossicles 
is for transmission, the vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the oval window and to the structures of the inner ear. Now let's talk about them separately. This is the malleus. This is the head of the malleus. And this is anterior process. And this is called the handle of the malleus. And then we have the incus. This is the body. It has a short process and a long process. And then the states the head and the base of the stapes. And now there is muscles attached to the ossicles. We're going to talk about them. There are two tensor tympani. So this is the first one attached to the malleus. And the function is for damping down vibrations from the tympanic membrane. It holds down the vibrations of the tympanic membrane. And the innervation for this muscle is from the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5. And the other muscle is attached to the stapes. It's called stapedius muscle. And it's for damping down vibrations from the stapes. And it's innervated by the facial nerve. And now we want to talk about something called the tympanic cavity, the boundaries and contents, or the cavity of the middle ear called the tympanic cavity. That's why every structure runs through it. There will be a name like tympani or tympanic. So this is the external auditory meatus. It has a lateral part, a medial part, superior part, posterior one, and inferior part. We're going to talk about them separately. Now we'll start with the lateral part. It's called the membranous part because the tympanic membrane is there. And then the posterior part called the mastoid wall. This is called a ditus to the mastoid antrum and posteriorly to the tympanic cavity there is the mastoid antrum and then there is the mastoid air cells now the mastoid air cells are air filled cells contains mucous membranes and it's continuous with the middle ear and that's why infections from the middle ear can transmit and go to the mastoid antrum to the mastoid air cells now the infections are named the name is mastoiditis the infection of the mastoid air cells it can further it spread and cause osteomyelitis of the middle cranial fossa. If there is an abscess, it should be drained before anything, before any treatment. And also in the posterior part, there's something called pyramidal eminence, which is an opening for the stapedius muscle. This is the stapedius muscle. And from downward posteriorly, the facial nerve runs posterior to the tympanic cavity and gives its branch called the tympani inside the tympanic cavity. 
so this is all about the mastoid wall now we want to talk a little bit about chorda tympani which is a branch from the facial nerve it supplies the anterior two-thirds of the tongue for taste and it also supplies the submaxillae and sublingual salivary glands and that's why as a complication of surgery if we cut cord the tympani the nerve by mistake there will be a lack of taste and dry mouth And now we want to talk about the superior part or the tegmental wall. Now the tegmental wall, there is a thin bone called tegment tympani from the petrous part of the temporal bone which separates the tympanic cavity from the middle cranial fossa. and then the inferior wall or the jugular wall this is the internal jugular vein there is a thin bone which separates the tympanic cavity from the internal jugular vein and this bone is thickened by the mastoid air cells and then we have the medial wall or the labyrinth wall and this structure is called promontory and the promontory is formed by the basal coil of the cochlea just like the folds in the tympanic membrane it's just a fold from the cochlea this is the glossopharyngeal nerve and a sympathetic nerve from the internal carotid artery and also we have the lesser petrosal nerve now all of these are called the tympanic plexus and the tympanic plexus supplies a lot of structures in the middle ear it supplies the mucous membranes of the middle ear structures and the auditory tube and the mastoid air cells the other name for the auditory tube is the Ostachian tube we're going to talk about it now we have here the oval window which is attached to the stapes and the round window which is attached to the scarlet and penai, we're going to talk about it later. And there's two prominences, one for the facial nerve and the other one for the lateral semicircular canal. And now uh, there is the anterior wall. We're going to talk about the anterior wall. Now, the anterior wall, there is this muscle, the tensor tympani muscle, comes from the anterior wall. And we have the auditory tube, or the Ostachian tube. It opens in the nasopharynx. And the function is for balancing the pressure in the middle ear. And it's also for transmission of secretions from the middle ear to the nasal cavity. Now the first third near to the middle ear of the stachian tube 
is surrounded by bone or oh, it's the bony part and the other two thirds is surrounded by cartilage, the cartilaginous part. Now the blood supply for this taken tube from the external carotid artery there is an artery called the ascending pharyngeal artery and from the maxillary artery there is middle meningeal artery two branches from the maxillary artery the middle meningeal and an artery called artery of trigoid canal this is about the blood supply of the stacking tube regarding the middle ear we're going to talk about it later and now anteriorly to the tympanic cavity there is the internal carotid artery and there is a sympathetic plexus which going from the external uh, sorry from the internal carotid artery going to the tympanic cavity and it joins the tympanic plexus and there is also an exit for the lesser petrosal nerve and exit for the cord the tympani in the anterior wall And now we want to talk about the blood supply of the middle ear. Now from the external carotid artery, we have occipital or posterior auricular artery, which they give the mastoid branch. And from the maxillary artery, We have the tympanic branch and the middle meningeal artery. And then we have the ascending pharyngeal artery. And from the internal carotid artery we have the tympanic branches. So I think this is all about the middle ear structures, contents and boundaries. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks everyone and have a nice day.